Okay, so I'm originally from uh, Blekinge, so we couldn't do this in Swedish even if we wanted to. So <laughs> let's make it in English. We're going to present Jhipster, the best way to breed a new web app in the next uh, coming 45 minutes. So before we start, my name is Ola Peterson. I'm a full process, full stack software engineer. I love everything from requirements gathering to Docker. And together with me I have... Rickard Tulin, and I'm the Java Forum leader in Gothenburg. And I've been working with Java since a few years back. Yep, let's get started. Yeah. So Rickard, I have an idea. It's really, really simple. I want to write a status and then share it with the rest of the world. Well, okay. How would we go to, to create this? Well, I really don't understand what you're meaning, but uh, would it be okay if I give you a wireframe? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Ah, this is exactly what I want. Could you, could you make this happen? Sure. Uh, I think the, the way forward from this would be to uh, do a, a POC, proof of concept, so that we take out the technical risks, right? Sure, sure. Sounds good. So is this something uh, more like what you want? This is exactly what I wanted. But I forgot to tell you one of my non-functional requirements earlier. World domination. It has to be production worthy. Well, if you want world domination, um, there's a few things that we need to bring to the table. Well, I guess we could uh, build the application on some kind of framework, so let's bring in Spring Boot. Uh, we also, of course, need some kind of build system, Maven or Gradle. We need some front-end task runner, so we could use Grunt. We need the package manager for the front-end, so we use Bower. We need a we need a web stack, we need HTML5, CSS, AngularJS, Twitter Bootstrap, of course, and the beloved jQuery. It's always nice to hack jQuery. We also need SAS to cope with the CSS in a professional way. Of course, we need to store those tweets that you call them, right? So we need Hypenate and some database. And to cope with the database, we need some tool called Liquibase as well. And of course, world domination requires a distributed cache, so we bring in a Hazel cost. And uh, to be sure that we meet uh, your non-functional requirements, we need performance tests with Gatling, uh, and we can bring in Cucumber as well, some front-end test frameworks like Karma and Protractor, and some other management features like monitoring, security, user management, API documentation, internationalization, full text search, minified resources, cache headers, responsive UI, browser sync would be nice, and social login and user management. This sounds like a lot, Rickard. Well, it sums up to a scrambled screen and 160 hours. Okay, 160 hours is a bit more than I thought. Well, actually, you know, you have to add your fav favorite uh, flavor of velocity. And uh, as you all know, velocity is 63.2 percentage. So that would end up in a total of 261 hours and five minutes. Well, okay. Well, Ola, we actually forgot one small tiny thing. Forgot? We are 250 hours over budget. Well, we forgot to write the business logic, you know. Ah. Uh -huh. So, but that's only eight hours, so. <laughs> Reasonable. <laughs> that's okay, I think. So. But we are professionals, right? How can this dead simple application take six weeks? There has to be another way. Well. I, I feel like this uh, baby right now, you're right, there has to be another way. Uh, and here's where Jay Hipster comes to the rescue. So one important thing with Jay Hipster is that it's not a library. It's not something like that that you bring in. It's not 5,000 jar files. It's scaffolding. So it's something that generates code for you. At the essence, jhipster is a Geoman generator, which is used to create a Spring Boot application and the AngularJS frontend. 
Okay, so we'll bring in J-Hipster, but what will that solve for us in these 260 hours? Well, uh, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, we can remove all those, uh, those features. Mm -hmm. uh, J-Hipster will generate those, and we can remove all the <coughs> test, test things and the front-end, HTML5, we can remove those things as well, and we can remove Spring Boot as well. So we don't have to do anything? Well, you know, we have still have to write the business logic. I see. So the rationale why J-Hipster exists at all is that to create that stack we just saw, it's quite complex, and to wire everything uh, together is a quite hard task. Uh, Matt Rabel, he did a, uh, an application where he first generated uh, the code with jhipster, and he generated um, about 8,500 lines of code. And then he added the entities to his application. There was a few more thousand lines of code. And then he wrote the business logic, just a few thousand lines of code. But the total sum was that he could generate over 91% of the code. JHipster is not a new product, it's been there for like uh, two years. And it, it has uh, quite uh, lots of contributors in GitHub, so it's not a one-man show project, which is quite important if you're going to invest using it. Uh, I think one important figure here is that uh, every month 10,000 applications is generated right now with JHipster. And with the upcoming 3.0 release, I expect it to be quite much more. Okay, so you are saying generating. So I'm thinking of project scaffolding. What's your take on project scaffolding? Well, actually, I think project scaffolding is like this. And then we have Geoman to the rescue. So Geoman is a generator which will create uh, code and scripts for you. Uh, and it's using what it's called generators. So these are specifically written, and one of them is called jhipster. So as Ritger said, there isn't a library. jhipster is a generator using Geoman underneath. And what do we mean when we say that it generates? Well, we will show you this. And before, uh, before I show you, this is the pre-requirements. So I did install Geoman and the generator jhipster through uh, NPM before I got here. But what we will do is that we will create a new application and we will call it JForum. And as I said, I've installed Geoman before and now I'll write Joe JHipster. And it will ask me what will be the name of your application. Uh, we can call it JForum Stockholm. It's asked me about my package name. This is based on my previous selections with this uh, generator. Which type of authentication do I want in my application? Well, I want the standard HTTP session out for now. It will ask me what kind of database I would like to use. I could go for MongoDB or Cassandra. Today we will take SQL. It will also ask me what kind of production database I want. Let's go with PostgreSQL. In my development, I want to use H2 with disk-based persistence, with second-level caches. I want to use Elasticsearch for free text in search in my application. And for now, let's not go with clustered HTTP sessions for this demo. It also asks me if I want to use WebSockets. This hurts a bit, but let's skip that today. And then I'm a hipster, right? But I'm not that hip, so let's use Maven over Gradle. Then we also want to use Grunt. We skipped Libsus to save a bit of time here today. Let's go with Angular Translate, why not? And final but not least, we can select what kind of test frameworks we would like to use in our application. So let's go with Gatling because Scala is always nice. So as you see in my terminal here, it created a lot of different uh, files for me. And now it will start to generate my app.
And this is basically downloading the whole internet. So for now, let's leave it in the background and we'll talk a bit about the components here. So jhipster brings in the best of breeds uh, frameworks or utilities or tooling out there. It will use Bower to package your front-end stuff. Uh, you will, yeah, it's basically Maven, but for all your front-end dependencies. It will also use Grunt, uh, and Grunt is a task manager. It will allow you to hot deploy your, your front-end code, um, do SAS compiling for you, you can syntax check your JavaScript front-end code, etc. It also brings in AngularJS as our front-end framework. And for anyone using the front end, this is pretty much enterprise standard today. So it's well tested stuff that, that JHipster brings in. And for our back end, it uses Spring Boot. Uh, if you haven't heard about Spring Boot, it creates a mother jar or an EBR or fat jar. So you don't need an application server to spin this up for you. You will have a runnable jar. And uh, of course, we like this as Swedes make jar, not war. Okay, so downloading the internet is a bit too slow today, and I TV chef this, so let's use let's use Java Forum instead. So this is the exact same thing as, as I did now, but I prepared it at home. So what we can do once we have generated our application is to write Maven. And what this will do is to lo load this fat jar. And, and launch it for us. So in a short while, we will see that we have our application up and running. Right about now. So I wrote Maven. Now I have an Angular application running Spring Boot in the background package with a lot of different tooling. And what jhipster has done for us is a bit more. So let's log in using admin admin. If we have a look here, we can look at our entities, but we don't have any in our system yet. However, we have some pre-configured um, user settings. So we can go in here, we can change the name or, or uh, our email in the account. We can also change our password, so it handles authentication for us. Uh, we can have a look at the sessions. This is my session. I'm now logged in as admin. And we can sign out. But the real nice thing is in the administration tab. So what you see here is that we have four preset up users. This is based on role-based security. So this uses Spring Security underneath. We will have metrics. So we can see how much memory our application eats, how many threads are running. And we can see uh, how many requests that has been put towards our application. We also have health check. So I haven't set up my email. The rest is up and running. Spring configuration. Here we can see all the configuration that has been put together for this application. And here we can even search to see how things are configured in our application. We have audit logs. We have... API, this is using the amazing swagger. So we can see how our REST API looks. Uh, we can even actually get and, and verify that it works. And we also have a, a database driver, so we can connect to our database and go in and see what's in those tables. So this looks amazing, right? Or I think so at least. Um, but there is actually code underneath here. So this is the, the scaffolded or generated application. And what you see is that this is source code. This is not a library. We have our web app. So we have our standard CSS files. We have images. We have scripts with app and components. So this is the Angular part of it. We have our Java source code. We have repositories. We have security setup. We have our REST APIs. and Everything here is actually real code. So as you see, you can go in here and start to make your own changes. 
And this is of course really good because I doubt that you will, will take this and put it out into production. You most often want to rewrite your UI, brand it yourself, but JHipster has put together all your REST endpoints uh, with to the database and put a lot of tooling around it. So, Rickard, coding GPA entities. Well, you know, I'm a backend developer, so I should like entities, but, you know, database things, it's like, ah. Luckily, JHipster gives us generation or scaffolding of entities. Uh, and what um, JHipster does, it creates the database tables for you. Uh, it creates the liquid-based change set, and it creates the actual JPA entity. It creates the repository, Spring Data uh, repository. It creates a CRUD REST controller for you, and it creates an AngularJS uh, router controller service and all the views uh, in a CRUD uh, manner that you will see later. And it also creates integration tests and performance tests for those entities. So it's a full stack end-to-end -end, uh, generation. And if you haven't heard, to, heard of Liquibase, it's one of my favorite tools. And uh, you could, in a way, say that it's version control for the database. It's not really true. But you declare your database changes or your refactorings, uh, typically in an XML file or some other format. And then you commit those to, to your version control system. And uh, you keep everything in to your release artifact. So you're kind of deploying your database along with your uh, source code. And it's very easy to use, very easy to set up. Key takeaway from this talk, uh, unless you don't use Liquibase, is that you should start using Liquibase or Flyway or some other tool like that. It's really, really, really super awesome if you use a relational database, that is. Okay, so we will show you how JHipster can help us with creating JPA and entities and CRUD APIs. So what we could do is that we could go into a terminal and write Joe JHipster entity. But then I would have to answer all of these questions of what the name should be and everything. And what JHipster has also produced is a new tool called GDL Studio. So they have their own uh, DSL here. Uh, this is in a website, so this is on the web. And I can start to create my own entities. I can call it uh, Rickard. I can give uh, Rickard a name of type string and make it required. And as you see, Rickard appeared. And this is how you can also connect him with, through relations to, to other entities. I TV chef this as well. So I thought I TV chef this as well. Let's go and see where I put this. So, so basically, this is a very slim down IDE written in JavaScript for this very small DSL. Uh, it also has command completion. <laughs> so it's, it's quite cool, actually. It, and it's really super nice to, to see the relations visually of your JPA entities. It's so much easier. So I can show you that they have control space code completion. If I write something wrong here, it will tell me that this is not according to the DSL. But what I will do is uh, control save this. So that will download a file for me. And what I will do is to copy this file. And I will write jhipster uml and run that file. So as you see again, the generator is doing all its magic. It's setting up status gatling test.scala. It creates a status entity for me. It creates a type entity for me. And, uh, and the relationships between them in the database. So we'll bring up Spring Boot once again. And hopefully, when we log into our application. So now it's running all the liquid base change sets and everything. And right about 
now we have it up and running. So what you see in the entities field now is that those entities were actually created in our application. So we can go in here and we have front-end correlations to these entities that we created. We can create a new title. We can call it rest of the world. We can save it. And in our status field, you now see that the relation to type is displayed in my front-end code as well. So we can create a new status, hello Stockholm, hello, and we can assign this to whatever user that, that shared the status with the world. What's even more neat is that if I write hello Gothenburg here, What jhipster has set up through Elasticsearch for us is also full text search. So when I write Stockholm here, I will only filter on the Stockholm message. If I write Gothenburg, we'll see Gothenburg. And if I write hello, we see both of our created entities. So it's quite nice. And uh, you can focus on the important stuff here, writing the business logic instead of JPA annotations. So what you typically would do in this, uh, in this case is to, to remove this user interface or rewrite the, the view of, the, of this Angular JS application to, to su suit your needs. But you could still reuse the controller and the model and the, all those things. And you have all the, the, the rest control and everything back to the back end. So you could spend your eight hours doing the right thing. And you have user management. just. Throw in like four hours and you would connect this application to your uh, Active Directory or LDAP server, for example. Yeah. Yep. So long round trips, not being able to continue your development because you have to wait. How does this make you feel, Rickard? Well, I guess you can, uh, you can guess, but long round trips is awful, so... Then we have Browser Sync to the rescue. So Browser Sync is also a tool that JHipster brings in for us. So how this works is that we will CD down into our repository and we will write grunt serve. And grunt is this task runner that I told you about before. And what it will do is that it will put a um, proxy in front of our port 8080 localhost Spring Boot application. So as you see, or maybe don't see, but this is port 3000 right now, meaning that I'm connecting to this proxy. What's really cool about Browser Sync is that it syncs your browser to, uh, syncs all your browsers that you have opened and also to your code. So let's go in into the main CSS here and we'll take the background, background attribute of the body. So let's change this to red instead because red is always nice. As soon as I saved this file, it was injected. It pushed out those changes to my application. It's like JRebel for JavaScript. Exactly. <laughs> so if I write orange here, as soon as I save it, it's updated. And this is really, really nice for your productivity. But what's even more cool is that if we bring this down and connect with two browsers. So let's see, I'm signed in in both. No, not. Now I'm signed in both. So you're using both Firefox and uh, Chrome here? So if you've ever been in a web project where you had to support a lot of browsers, you had to build a responsive website, which this, by the way, already is from to start with. But you know when you develop for several hours and you make it look good in Chrome, then you switch to Firefox and you put down two more hours, then you start IE and then you go home. This is awesome if you have those kind of requirements on your tool. So what happens now is that the Firefox is in its mobile view. And what I can start to do is to check if my entities are looking good in mobile view as well. So those applications are, or those browsers are now both, both connected to browser sync and are in sync. So whatever I do in one of the browsers is reflected to the other browser. 
and at least I think this is really, really cool and really good for productivity if you have to support those kind of requirements. And just, just to, to, for you to understand, this is really not something that J-Hipster brings. It just sets all these things up for you. This is just plain old grunt serve. But it will set this up for you so you have this nice development workflow. Okay, so I think you start to see the points of J-Hipster. So, Ricker, deploy process, the deploy process of putting this into production. What do you think of that? Well, you know, I like Maven. I've spent my weeks uh, doing Maven XML configuration, and I actually don't like that too much, so maybe Yay Hipster could save us some time, right? Of course, Yay Hipster can save us some time here. So, we want to be in the cloud, right? Everyone wants to be in, in the cloud. Uh, I don't want to ruin anything for you, but the cloud isn't real. It's just somebody else's computer. But we want to be there anyway. Uh, so we will show you how you deploy to Heroku, which is one of uh, like AWS or Cloud Foundry. There are also support for both Cloud Foundry and AWS, but we will show you this on Heroku. So what you do is that you'll open a new terminal. And we are now in the repository of our application. And we'll write Joe J Hipster Heroku. So it will ask us what kind of uh, name we want uh, in our deployment. We'll call it Java Forum. Why not? We want it deployed in G EU, in Europe, of course. And I well, hadn't logged in to. So you have to log in to Heroku. This is a free account. You can set it up. If you're going to live demo this, always remember to log in. Certified. Ah. One last chance. Okay, this would have been really, really cool if I had been able to log in. But basically what it does at this point, so I write Joe J Hipster Heroku, but I have to log into my account, which for some reason isn't working now. And that's the reason. Um, but it starts to, uh, if you would have chosen uh, SAS for instance, it starts to SAS compile, it starts to minify all your front end resources. Uh, as you see in the background here, we have a development banner in the top left. It will remove that, minify, uglify, it will do all of those for you and then uh, upload the fat jar to the web and then you have a, a public, public IP or domain. So all the Maven profiles are set up for you and in, in when you're deploying into the cloud, you will use Postgres as that was the database you choose for production. But uh, do you have a running instance somewhere? Perhaps? I might have. Mm, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, deploying to the cloud is super easy, at least. Uh, Just imagine that this was really, really cool and that we had it running on the cloud now. <laughs> I have it running on my computer, not somebody else's computer. Where is really easy? So, Rickard, now that we have deployed this to the cloud amazingly well, um, what about setting up tests? What do you think about that? Well, that's kind of boring, so I think we should scaffold tests. So, uh, J-Hipster generates uh, uh, Gatling tests for you, uh, for your entities, and it also generates Karma, Karma J's unit tests. Of course, you have to write your own unit test for your business logic. It's not an AI engine or something. So you, you get the bare essence of, uh, like, for your entities, and you have a really good setup. So if you would like to write your own performance test, you have Gatling set up. You just have to keep writing performance tests for your own code. So that's a, quite a big time saver. And there's even more things. Uh, uh, J Hipster supports pagination, uh, NoSQL, as you said, uh, email, social login, etc. Yada yada. And I need to log into my Wi Fi. 
ignore. So uh, this is the best slide. Why is the screen lagging? Let's oh, there we go. So say microservices one more time. J Hipster 3.0 brings support for microservices. So it will bring support for Eureka, Eureka Search, Logstash, uh, Kibana, Elk, the Elk stack. Uh, if you don't use the Elk stack in your system, you should uh, do so. Do that tomorrow. Uh, use Elk and Liquibase. Super good. Uh, it will uh, add support for the Hysteric dashboard, Docker config uh, generator, and Open ID Connect server, which is work in progress, I believe. J Hipster is to be, to be released this month, at the end of this month, so any day now. J Hipster 3.0. Oh, yeah. J Hipster is sorry, already. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. If you found this interesting and want to see all the pre requirement installations and things like that, you can find these slides at widr.se slash jhipster. And if you're a hands on kind of uh, person, uh, there is a uh, hands-on lab that you could uh, Google or find somewhere uh, and follow. And I think we have some time for Q&A. And uh, actually, I, I, I will bring the first question. Can you use this in production? Of course. <laughs> because this is not a library that you bring in. It's Spring Boot, it's AngularJS, and it's Liquibase and all those other tools that we have used in several projects for many years, so there actually is no quality problem uh, using jhipster. It's everything needed for world domination. Yeah. And uh, if you don't want the front end, there ac is actually options to not generate the front end, or if you don't want the back end, you can skip the back end, or you can delete whatever you want. It's not intrusive in any way. Okay, we'll open up the floor to questions. Can you just back the slides again? Touch up the camera, Yes. The, the answer is yes. <laughs> we can. <laughs> you press the clicker. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Thanks. Lennart. Yeah, cheers, guys. So, uh, basically, the problem I feel in the in particular in the front end area is that there is at least a new standard coming out every month, if not two. And if you do a project generated with human, you get pretty much everything that's out there, which means you've got, what, 20 or odd configuration files for Grunt, for Gulp, for AngularJS, for everything. And while they actually work together, um, it's not, I find that J Hipster and, and Yeoman is very good at scaffolding, it's very good at getting a prototype up. But maintainability is just bloody hell. Uh, and that's putting it mildly. Because if you even can bring someone on that actually knows all this stuff, back end to front end, where you split everything up with, I don't know, say 25 odd technologies stashed together, it's a bit of a challenge. And if you really had to do a business application upon that scaffolding, in my humble opinion, it feels that I take more time morphing from the scaffolding to what's whatever's going to you know get out there. So what I tend to do is do the scaffolding this way or well, similar well, ish ways, and then basically just get rid of everything and start all over again because you have to do it maintainable for the organization that's actually paying for it. Is there something, and that, so comes my question, that's a bit of background. <laughs> now, <laughs> is there anything to your knowledge, because I know you're actually really slick guys, uh, that would do roughly what this does, but without doing it with tw 25 to 50 technologies stashed? Yeah. Um, so first off, maintainability in JavaScript. No. <laughs> uh, if you are in, a, in an enterprise uh, web application today, so Angular is pretty much enterprise standard, right? You will have to choose between Gulp and Grunt, but if you are in a modern web application, you are already using either of those. And it will generate all the config files for you. 
but you can just remove them or you can go in and as I said, it's not a library. You can actually fiddle with the serve if you want to. I don't think you should, but you, you can. Uh, for your second question, uh, the Geoman is, is the tool to use generators. And it's a well and alive framework or ecosystem with a lot of different generators. So I don't know any particular one, but I'm sure uh, if you check out the Geoman website, you can search for all kind of different types of generators. Maybe one with only Java backend, only Angular, etc. So if I generate the application once, can I add, let's say, if I miss the web sockets, can I add it later into the application? So the question was, if you generate the application once, can you re-change configuration like add web sockets? So. What I didn't show you, uh, but I, I wrote the line Joe J Hipster Entity. So it can also use a lot of different subgenerators. For WebSockets, I don't know, but I would guess that there is a Joe J Hipster call on WebSockets, which would set this up for you once again. Uh, well, actually, there, there's a configuration file where you can change the configuration and rerun the, uh, the J Hipster command, and it will add those things. I mean, let's say if I generate any application with the older version and you want to add new new, new things to that one, will that new JF3.0 help me that one? Well, it, it has saved all the configuration. And since this is scaffolding, you have to work with the version control system like probably Git. So you have committed all your things and then you upgrade and then you regenerate everything and then you have to see what's different and what you would like to keep. And probably in a lifetime using a scaffolding tool, you have to stop scaffolding, right? So if, I, if I have an application with few entities, so I mean, let's say I don't want to generate the application from scratch now. No, you, you, have, you have your application in version control, right? Yeah, right. yeah exactly. But, yeah. I, but I have done like a lot of uh, business logic on that one. I created like five or ten. Yeah, there might be a tipping point where you cannot re-scaffolding. It could be, but you, the, the, uh, you can always add new entities, for example. Uh, so you, you could use that part. And I, I think just a big step to, to get to have the project structure, to have the Maven build or Graden build and liquid base set up and Gatling tests and all those things is such a time saver. So if you just do it once and just more or less throw away everything and just keep the project structure, there's a big time saver just there. Uh, uh, one, one short comment. Uh, in the Geoman um, tool, if you regenerate and it finds a merge conflict with existing files, it will ask you whether you want to keep it or overwrite and things like that. So it could come in nice in such situations. But at, at the end of the day, uh, a Yeoman generator is it's more or less a Maven archetype. So it, it's, it's the same thing, has the same problems. It won't be a silver bullet. You cannot use it forever, like 10 years in, a, in your development, probably. Any other questions? Yes, so if you're, uh, you showed something where you started uh, editing some of the HTML files. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and what about, the, again, the maintainability? I mean, uh, previous attempts like Spring Root, they were full of the implementations uh, and uh, uh, aspects, sorry, um, uh, or, or the changes that you made. But is there any kind of support for the main key changes that you've done uh, as you're upgrading to uh, maybe? And we generate one project, or is this just a like a way to get started with your project and you never go there again? I, I think it would be somewhere in between, actually. I mean, it, it, you can use it more than just once, uh, and, and you can keep using it if you use a version control system and and check what, what is new, what should I keep, what should I bring in, what should I throw away, what, is, what does it do? And I, I think the tools today are so good, so you actually could have that workflow. But I, it might be that if, if you have too much code, too much changes, it will be too daunting task to do that. And then, then you're at the tipping, tipping end. Yeah, the figure in the 
beginning that said uh, there are 10,000 applications made every month or yeah. do you have to figure out how many of those actually go to production? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, not not that I'm aware of. Um, no, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is Spring Boot and Angular JS. So, it's it's just the code that we have, and and uh, I think uh, I forgot to. to say about uh, what you asked, uh, Lennart. Uh, I'm a bit worried, though, with this 3.0 release when they bring in microservices support and Eureka and what's next. It might be too bloated at the end. So it's a balance to just do, do enough and do it very well and not to be like Java EE, perhaps 1.3 or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah.